Welcome to the Django Project, DJ Blogger. This tutorial is part of a YouTube Django Project playlist, which you can access in the video description. You can watch the whole course from the very beginning. If you enjoy this course and would like all the updated tutorials and associated code samples and more, you can check out this course and other courses this project features at Udemy. The link to the course is in the video description. So we're just about at the end now building our index or home page. We just have the footer now to build. Now this again is a component which will be utilized on multiple pages. So we want to build this again as a single component that we can reuse throughout our application. So back in our code, let's go ahead and just remove or just close everything down from the previous tutorial. Let's get back into DJ Blogger and let's go into our templates and our base. So in our base, we have our base and we have a nav bar. So let's go ahead now and add a new mm, not folder, add a new file, footer.html. So this is a, a reusable component. This what we will add to many of our pages. Right, so this is essentially just going to be some HTML. Um, at this point, there's nothing else that we need to include. So let's just go ahead now and be mindful of the tags that we use. Uh, so we're going to use this footer here, and then we're going to build an unordered list. So let's go ahead and build a nice list here. And uh, go A for now. Right, so that's our list in place from this point. It's just a copy and paste of our list elements, right? So let's go into the footer here. Let's add a new class. Uh, so here it's going to be a, a nav. So we're creating a nav element from Bootstrap. Um, we want to add a font size. So we do have this small option. Let's, uh, te a small text option. We'll change the text in a minute. Let's just uh, get everything we need. So we're gonna use text muted um, and then we're going to use font weight 500 which is a font weight that we created inside of our css here so we keep that open let's now integrate this into our index page so in our blog template here let's go to index and just below the cloud here we're going to add our new component so this is just going to be an include like we previously did with the other elements. So um, is it in base? Yep, so base um, slash and then footer HTML. Okay, so in the templates, it's inside the base folder and then inside the footer or the footer. There we go. All right, so hopefully that's been included. Let's go back to our page and refresh. You can now see that we have something down here. So we're trying to create this here. You can see that that's quite a small font size. I don't think that's going to be supported maybe by Bootstrap. What do we do here? I can't remember now. Let's go back to our page here. Let's just, I can see that that's not as small, is it? So maybe we need to build our own font size here. So let's do 12 pixels in REM. So it's 0.7 rem. So we're going to create a new style here in our main CSS. Let's go down. Let's go for a font size uh, 12. So, okay, so we created a font size 12. So let's utilize that now within our footer for the text here. So we're going to apply it up here and that should then apply to all the text. So we add font size 12 right there. Let's go back in, refresh. Um, okay. Okay, so that might be a little bit too small, right? <laughs> We're probably not gonna be able to see that. Uh, that's interesting though. Um, Cause I think here we did add font size 12. So, mm, interesting. We'll go, for, we'll go with that for now. Let's have an inspect of this. Font size 12. Maybe I made a mistake here with the, the rem calculator. Let's go back. Font size 12. Interesting. Okay. Just make sure that the browser isn't um, zoomed in. 
Okay. So, so far we've looked at CSS and we placed CSS, for example, inside of our own main CSS file, kind of a, a, an area where we can have some global CSS styles. And then we've also seen that we've added CSS, for example, in line in, in the actual uh, element. So that's two places. The only other place that you might want to add CSS is if you were, for example, just mocking up like a page like this, and you wanted to apply CSS directly to this page. And so what we could also do is we could add a style component here, and then we could go ahead, go ahead and add, for example, our style directly here. And this is obviously going to be related only for this component. So let's go ahead and add um, some padding for this, so padding top. Now this can be done in many different ways. We can add padding top, padding bottom, padding left and, and so on, or we can define padding um, all in one statement. So padding top, that's gonna to be zero pixels. And then padding bottom, or padding right, that's gonna be 10. So we'll just go around in clockwise here. Padding bottom, it's gonna be five pixels. And then padding left is gonna be zero pixels. So we can apply padding in that way. So this is for the footer. So let's go ahead now and just put that in here. Let's go back and let's take a look at that. Okay, so not much to see there at the moment because we need to probably add uh, some more elements here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna copy and paste in mine, um, but I'll show you what you need to do. One second. There we go. So I've gone ahead and already created these. So notice that uh, what you find here is a list item. The class is nav item, nav item. So here we're just following a typical nav bar from Bootstrap. If you're interested, go and check out the documentation. And then inside of here, we have a link. So we have the A tag here. You can see that the class is nav link and one of them is gonna be active, which we can remove. Let's remove that. So nav link, and then you can see that we have um, some other metadata here, which we can get rid of. And then we can have the link eventually. And then finally, what we want the actual link to look like, in this case, the text, help, and so on. And you can see that this has basically just been copied and pasted multiple times. I've added a few links. So go ahead and do that. And then let's take a look at what we've got here. And you can see that that's not looking too bad. You can see that we've gone ahead and because we created links, it looks like uh, we've got that issue again of everything being blue. Now we did request that everything is text muted. So we did specify that and we were expecting that to then be applied to all of these elements, but that hasn't happened. So what we can do here in actual fact is let's just get rid of that. And then let's, in our style, let's go for footer and then let's apply this to any links inside of our footer. And then let's change the color to inherit. So that's just going to inherit the, the color, which is probably going to be utilizing the main kind of body color that we use for the other text. And there we go. Right, so the last thing here, you can see that the, the padding is a little bit out of place. So let's see if we can um, change this. So we want to apply a padding to the nav link. So let's bring in up here where we had the footer. Let's also bring in nav link. So what we're doing in actual fact here is we're applying it in the footer, in the footer here element. Inside of here, you'll find nav links. So wherever we find the nav link in a class, we're going to apply this style to it. That's the plan. So let's go back in refresh and there we go. So just to reiterate the format here, we're saying that this style here is going to be formatted or utilized where it finds, first of all, the footer here, and then inside the footer, look for nav link. So this style is going to be utilized and applied to everything inside of, anything inside of this block here where the class is nav link. So that pretty much solves that. Let's just check out the scalability of that. You can see that when we scale down, you can see both the, the tags and our footer nicely, play nicely. And obviously they are removed completely. 
Now we won't find at this point the footer here, because remember when we scroll down, it's just going to be infinite. So we aren't necessarily going to see the footer there, but I think eventually what we do, what we can do is add the footer here um, in the drop down here. That might be a good place to add the footer. That pretty much resolves the footer that we're going to be utilizing. Now eventually we might want to connect those two different pages and hopefully when you, we cover the next components of this course, you'll have a much better idea on how to build a new page and then you can connect those pages yourself.